Justin. All the gossip. gossip. The rumor report. Gossip. gossip. With Angela. Angela Yee. It's the rumor report. The Breakfast Club. Well, now that people have identified who Rihanna's new man is, Hassan Jamil is his name, as we told you yesterday, because they were photoed making out at the pool in Ibiza in Spain. We don't know if that's her boyfriend or what the situation is, mm -hmm. but we do know that Naomi Campbell and Rihanna had unfollowed each other on Instagram. Nobody exactly knew what happened. And Naomi used to, I guess, be friends with him, be cool with him. They were spotted really close a couple of times. Now, if you remember on Watch What Happens Live back in March, she was actually asked about why her and Rihanna aren't following each other. Here's what happened. Everything's fine. I'm an actress now, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess that was her say, saying everything's fine. People pay attention acting. to stuff like that? Who following who and who not following who? I guess they do. I don't know. I never, I don't even know how can you tell when somebody unfollows somebody. I, I can't figure it out. I don't even know. I, I just, you know, and sometimes you follow people by accident. When you scroll up and down, you follow people. And then you got to unfollow them right away, but they probably already know you followed and unfollowed them. Right. Like one time I wasn't following Yee and Yee wasn't following me. And people was like, oh, the Breakfast Club is beefing and they're not following they each asked, other. They asked, somebody actually sent a story in to one of the blog sites saying that me and Envy was beefing with each other. But what had happened was I was trying to see if somebody wasn't following you if you they could tell if you read a dm on instagram mm -hmm. so envy was sending me one and unfollowed me to see if I, he could tell that i read it even though he wasn't following me and he never followed me back i'm gonna be honest with you that whole explanation y'all just explained lets me know why i don't give a damn about who follows who <laughs> okay i was just trying don't to care. see if i read a dm if you could tell and so envy was like all right i'm gonna unfollow you and send a dm but okay. then i i was like how did anybody even know that because i told envy i said are you not following me <laughs> I be trying to figure out how uh, paparazzi gets those kind of pictures of Rihanna and that dude because they didn't look like they was trying to be seen. Right. Well, what mm -hmm. probably happened was somebody tipped them off, whoever was renting the villa out to them or whatever, and said, you know, Rihanna's staying here. And they probably got paid a nice amount of money. Somebody that worked there, whoever mm. rented it. So that's how it happens, all those inside sources. All right. Damon Dash is going to be launching a new network, Dash Diabetes Network, and that is for health and wellness. He's a type 1 diabetic. So he talks about the complications that come with that disease. Here's a little sneak peek. In life, everyone's dealt different cards. And I was dealt the diabetes card. I'm a type 1 diabetic. Diabetes is not a weakness. It's a place to showcase your strength. It shows that you could do everything that everybody else could do plus that. If you want to learn more about being a diabetic and being cool while you're diabetic and the lifestyle of a diabetic, check out the Dash Diabetes Network. I would, uh, I mean, first of all, that sounds like a great idea, but I would love to know more. What is a diabetes network? Why do I need a whole network about diabetes? Like, well, there's going to be 10, 20 minute episodes. It's going to be filmed in the form of talk shows like fishbowl discussions, cooking based episodes that offer recipes and wellness oh, tips, that's gonna be cool. interviews with specialists, and that's going to be on his uh, Dash streaming service, the Dash Diabetes app, and on cable TV. So it officially dope. launches August 7th. Drop one of Clues Bombs from Dame Dash. That sounds dope. Mm -hmm. Sound like some outside the box thinking. All right, now there's an auction house, Profiles in History, and they actually sold the R2-D2 droid that was used in several Star Wars movies. Guess how much that went for at the auction? A million dollars. $2.76 million huh. yesterday. For R2-D2, does it work? I don't know. But I'm, I'm not, he sounds like... It's 43 inches tall. He seems like a very inadequate robot in 2017, though. I mean, it's classic. It was in several of the movies. Yeah, but you got robots out here that you can actually have sex with. You can penetrate. Well, what would I want with R2-D2? You don't know what you can do with R2-D2. Yeah, you might be able to penetrate him if that's what you're into. He's like a high-class fire hydrant. Now, other items that sold were Luke Skywalker's lightsaber from the first two movies. That sold for 450000 Darth Vader's helmet from the original movie sold for $96,000. You know what else sold for a lot? What's that? And this has nothing to do with Star Wars. It was the lighted dance floor from Saturday Night Fever that sold for $1.2 million. And that's wow. for all of you people that watch all these movies and think about all these original things. Is it a good investment to buy I wouldn't that? spend all that money for R2-D2 in 2017. You'd be standing next to that thing on the street, somebody try to put mail in it. Listen, that probably is a super, super fan. Yeah, who has super, lots super of money. fan. Absolutely. All right, I'm Angela Yee, and that's your rumor report.